the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and forever to the age of all ages. Amen. Uh, today is the first Sunday of the blessed month of Abib, and coincidentally, or thankfully, um, this year the Feast of the Apostles falls on, this, on, on a Sunday, which doesn't happen uh, every year. Um, and so we're uh, actually the gospel for the feast and the gospel for Sunday are very uh, similar anyway. Um, so we thank God for that. Just to let you know, as we always do in terms of the, the months, last month we were speaking of the work of the Holy Spirit, and this month is more specifically the work of the Holy Apostles because we start with the Feast of the Apostles. And um, as we were saying last night, probably one of the most distinctive characteristics of the service of the apostles is the power of the Holy Spirit um, that worked in them mightily. Um, and so today we see the Lord sending out his apostles. Um, this happened, of course, before the crucifixion, um, but it also happened even more um, powerfully and uniquely. Um, it was kind, this was a more kind of maybe like a test run, um, but he gives them direction and um, specifies exactly what they should do and what they should say, as the good teacher does. Um, <clears throat> and the church selected this passage to remind us, uh, to, to tell the Lord, as, um, as you taught your disciples, teach me. And as we ask the apostles, as the Lord taught you, also uh, teach us. Um, and if you go into the gospel of today, the Lord gives very many directives on how to serve um, or how to live for the apostles, not just what to say. Um, like, for example, he says to them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few, therefore pray. So he tells them to pray that the Lord sends uh, ministers into the service or labors into the harvest, he says. and says, go your way. Behold, I send you out as long lambs among wolves. What to expect? It's not going to be easy. Then he says, carry neither money back, nor uh, knapsack, nor sandals, um, nor greet anyone along the road. He tells them what to do, what to take with you, how to focus in the service. And then um, he says, eat whatever they set before you. Um, don't go from house to house. But wherever you uh, uh, are residing in state in that place until you leave. And if you're not accepted, then, then go. Um, and w wipe off the, d the dust from your feet, saying the kingdom of God is near you. So um, he gives very, very, even in just a few verses, um, he tries to cover uh, as much ground as he can. And this is what, this is the, the discipleship. Um, it's not just a few words, but it's a life that we, uh, uh, that God tries to impart on one generation to the next. I, I, of course, through his Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> and, um, this is something that we can't just read in books, but it's a life that has to be modeled for us, uh, whether between the parent and the child, or the servant and the, and the student, um, or the confession father and the one who is being um, is in the confession, the confessee. Um, <clears throat> so, as His Holiness Pope Shenouda, blessed memory, said, um, discipleship is a way of life. He says, everyone who believes in Christ is called to be his disciple. So for Christians, we have to be disciples. We have to be disciples of God first. Um, and that entails a lot of things. We can't just say, oh, it's this uh, fast or this service is just for Abuna or for the Sunday school teachers. No, um, everyone who is Christian is called to be a disciple of Christ. Um, <clears throat> And he also says, discipleship is not just a matter of learning particular facts, it's not just information, but rather it is a way of life. Um, and that's why it was very important for, uh, for example, the new monks to, to have a teacher, to have someone that they are modeling and, and discipling after. Um, just like the disciples spent years with the Lord Christ, um, if we want to live the true Christian life, we need a father. Um, <clears throat> not just the confessor father, but we need someone that we can uh, go to to give us guidance and help. Um, or we just need examples for us. Um, in, like, for example, the Synexarium, uh, we have the saints, but also in our contemporary life, we have we have people. If you look closely enough, 
you'll find um, great examples for you. Um, so one of the very important characteristics of the good discipler is that they are a good disciple. Um, and those who have the spirit of always wanting to learn from anyone and everyone. Um, and you, you'll see this even in the great el spiritual elders that you probably um, know. They, lo they like to learn. They like to listen. They like to be a disciple. Um, <clears throat> and if we don't have this characteristic, then we can't get anywhere. Um, so that's why we always have to try to be a good student. And same thing, the, the best teachers, the best um, professors, the, the, the best CEOs are the ones who learn constantly. They never stop learning. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, we say discipleship is a process. Um, as St. Paul says, brethren, join in following my example and note those who saw, so walk as you have for us a pattern or a type um, or uh, an example. He says, you have for us an example. He's, he was very humble, but at the same time, he was being honest saying this is how the, the service is working. Um, there's, there's a lot of people around that are walking in the path. So follow them because they're following Christ. Um, and how he explains a little bit more specifically in the book of Philippians, he says, the things which you learn and received and heard and saw in me. It's it, these things do. So it's by teaching, it's by receiving, by handing down. Um, I think we spoke about this before, but like, for example, when a priest gets uh, ordained, he spends 40 days right after he spends 40 days in the monastery and he receives the tradition. Um, there's a lot of things that he could learn ahead of time with books, but there are certain things that have to be handed down face to face in person for, for a minim minimum number of time, at least 40 days. Um, and then his first liturgy where he celebrates we say this is the day he received. He received the oblation. We don't. We don't take. We receive. We always receive. Um, <clears throat> and so this is what Saint Paul is trying to get at here: uh, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace uh, be with you. Um, <clears throat> so we desire that any servant or parent, um, number one, learns from God first. Number two that we learn from the saint second, and number three, we learn from others third. Um, and even parents in that order, we, we desire for our kids to learn from God first, because um, we're not the best examples. And um, the saints were better example than us because at least they finished good. We don't know if we're gonna finish good or not. Um, so that's why we always put the saints even before us. And the, and the and But still, we have a responsibility. Um, as, as long as we are doing the same thing as best as we can, um, then God will work in, in the person. So just we'll just uh, actually be pretty brief today, but just a few points on the concept of discipleship. Um, the first one is the disciple serves all. If you noticed in the passage that St. Paul uh, gives to us today on his feast, um, the church could have selected many uh, as you know, St. Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament, um, but the church selected on his feast this one in particular, 1 Corinthians 9, where he talks about how he works to win souls. Um, and he says, though I'm free from all men, I've made myself a servant to all. This is the disciple, and the discipler is a servant to all. Because um, Christ came what, to, to serve, not to be served. He washed his disciples' feet, and so on the Feast of, of the Apostles, uh, we, we follow their steps and we wash uh, the, the feet of, of the saints of the church as well. Um, <clears throat> and St. Paul, in a sense here, he's saying, um, I am like, and don't misunderstand, like a chameleon. For example, the chameleon is able to, to uh, change the outside, but the inside never changes. So the purpose of changing the outside is for benefit, okay? Maybe for the chameleon it's for the benefit of the self. But here, St. Paul is saying, in order to benefit others and to bring them closer to Christ, I have to make them comfortable um, without sinning, 
right? Sometimes we misunderstand this and we say, oh, I, I have a friend, I want to win them, I'm going to be with them, no matter what they do, even if they sin. Like, no, that's, not, that's not the right mentality. That when they sin, you, you, you exhort them, and you, as a good friend, you encourage them not to do this, and you don't follow with them in that flood of dissipation. Um, <clears throat> so here's St. Paul saying, I became a Jew to the Jew. I became uh, those without the law as those without the law, even though my law is the, the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> why? So that I could win them. And if you look at his life, when he stood before kings, when he spoke with uh, servants, he, he respected them, and his main goal, I need to save this person. He, he didn't uh, uh, fear from telling the truth to king, the kings and the people in great power. And at the same time, he didn't... Um, disrespect those who were beneath him but everyone he treated with, with with the same honor and respect desiring to save them by the grace of god um, <clears throat> and that's why he said i've become all things to all men by that by all means i might save some he didn't say save all because there's some people who don't accept and that's not as, as long as we're trying as best as we can everyone has a, a their own personal decision to accept or not. But at least we do our part. Um, so kind of like we said, the chameleon, he disappeared in order that people may see Christ. Um, and that's what the servant uh, does to the best of their ability. We want to disappear so Christ may appear and they may love and serve and, and honor um, others and try to do the same. <clears throat> Uh, so the, the next point is that the disciple is disciplined. Uh, and this is hard, but like St. Paul says, I discipline my body, bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. This is difficult for us um, to, to enact, especially in the feast days. In fast, thank God, m most of us are being as disciplined as we can in the fast. But once the fast is over, okay, I can do whatever I want. And then sometimes we open the door to sin. And we remind all of us um, that we should make sure we don't become disqualified um, in the feast. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord says, if you want to be a disciple, you have to carry the cross. You have to have some sort of discipline in your life. And as we know, the person who is not disciplined struggles a lot with self-control and struggling against sin and temptation. Um, and so the church tries to teach us to be more disciplined in our prayers, in our fasting, in um, our reading, in our confession. These things are, the church is not just putting a bunch of rules, but it's trying to model for us, try to be on the straight and narrow. And we're on the straight and narrow, God will be glorified and you become a better disciple of Christ. Um, like we said before, it is a, a way of life. Um, so the true disciple, we say, I will strive to the best of my ability, to allow God to work in me, to strengthen my faith in him, to polish my character or to clean me up to be so that I might have the image of Christ more and to prepare my heart to receive the Holy Spirit, not just once, but a daily. Um, <clears throat> and um, another point we say, one of the first steps is to imitate. Um, we say imitation is a form of flattery, but actually it's a form of discipleship. Um, and that's why St. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. I'm following Christ, I'm looking at the goal, and so far, I'm on the right path. So just follow behind. Sometimes, if, you know, like if you're in a caravan, or um, if you're uh, marching with an army, you don't see the person, three people in front of you, you only see the person in front of you, and you have hope and confidence that the person in front of you is walking right in back of the person in front of them. How do you know that? If you don't see the person in front of them, then you know, then you know that you're on the right. Unless, like for example, if if I'm walking in front of someone, and I see, you know, if I tilt myself and I see every, a, a whole long line, then I'm confident this is the right path. If I tilt and I see there's no one in front of me, I'm not going to follow this guy. He's 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 leading me and, and no one else. Um, but if we sit, there's a long line, and at the end of the line is Christ, then 
we just follow, we just continue to follow that person. So every now and then we just have to tilt to the and make sure, okay, this person is in the line with scripture, is in line with the church, is in the line with the tradition, um, and we follow. Um, <clears throat> so we don't always see the the second, third, fourth person in front of us, um, but but we imitate uh, Saint Paul as he imitated Christ. Um, <clears throat> and the disciples of St. Paul. So that's why St. Paul says, though you may have thousands of instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For through Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. This is the discipleship, um, that we see the gospel in the flesh. We become living gospels, and we follow living gospels, um, because what they do and what they say is in line with Christ. Um, <clears throat> of course, God is above all. But sometimes we need someone right next to us to kind of point and say, see, this is this is how we follow scripture. And this is basically the, the, the role of the parent or the servant or the confession father. Um, <clears throat> and uh, St. John Chrysostom talks about this uh, regarding St. Peter, uh, the apostle. And he says, let us not then admire him, St. Peter only, or be struck with him only, but imitate him. Uh, our goal is to imitate the apostles. Um, that we too may, when we depart from here, be counted worthy to see him, St. Peter, but more importantly, Christ, and to share the inexpressible glory which God may allow us all to attain by the grace and love toward man of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom and with whom be glory, Father, and Holy Spirit, and evermore. Amen. So the goal here is to attain the kingdom. Um, and sometimes... We can get there on our own, but more often than not, we need help. The help, so we have the scriptures for us, we have the church for us, we have um, the tradition, but we need we need some guidance along the way, um, and so we shouldn't um, have too much confidence in ourselves to think we got this. But we have plenty of saints and and plenty of. Uh, tools at our hand um, so that we can edge ourselves closer and closer uh, by the grace of God to the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord uh, bless us always with the blessings of the holy apostles and help us to imitate them. Uh, and glory be to God now and forever into the age all ages. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Sorry for the sake of the people who um, are not with us in the, in the flesh, but through uh, in the spirit or, or through YouTube. <laughs> um, we will just put some of the announcements um, uh, now. Uh, I know it's a little awkward, but I think just for the meantime, um, this is probably the easiest um, for, for all of us. So again, we uh, wish you a blessed feast of the Holy Apostles. As we said, there's no fasting um, until the fast of St. Mary on August uh, 7th, except for Wednesday and Friday. Um, <clears throat> just to let you know, uh, if... Uh, at the end of the liturgy, you can all get a, a small water, bottle of water, of the Le'en. Um, but if you come afterwards, because, since not, not everyone could be here today, um, just ask one of the deacons or, or one of the fathers to get uh, a water of the blessing of the Le'en. Because as you know, we weren't able to, to pray uh, over the water the last time on Holy Thursday. Um, <clears throat> And a lot of people believe strongly in the power um, and the blessing of, of this holy water, especially for the sick. Um, <clears throat> so just a few announcements, as you see, thank God, on the Feast of St. Peter, who the Lord said, on this rock, I'll build my church. Um, one of our intercessors of the Holy Transfiguration, um, we, we call upon him for also to intercede for the beautification of the church and the building of the church. So he answered already. Um, with, with the nice uh, pews. Um, thank God we had the opportunity to receive these pews from uh, from Christ the Good Shepherd Church who were not able to use them there. Um, we got, we ask God to bless them for their generosity. And it's nice to see how the churches are helping um, each other out. We also sincerely thank all of the men um, and the youth who participated in the delivery of them. It was not easy. Um, so God reward all of them, um, each one by, by one. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully in the future, we'll designate the areas um, as we did before for people to sit so that we can 
at least try to still maintain the social distancing. Um, until then, you just do it as you can, as best as you can. Um, for communion, we'll go back to the to the earlier way as before to take communion in the center aisle. But there are, I think, still taped um, the the six foot markers just so that each family can can still try to maintain the, the distance um, as best as you can. Um, some people may not have heard uh, of this, even though we emailed it and put it on the website. But we're very thankful to have another donation um, uh, match campaign. Um, we decided to end it by the end of the year, September 10th. Um, uh, so uh, we kindly uh, request that God touches your heart. I'm sure he has already touched your heart. Um, for, and all of these will go towards the building uh, campaign. We're, we're, we're quite close. We're actually closer than we thought. Um, so this is a great last, or hopefully not, hopefully last, but maybe not necessarily last push that we need in order to, to continue the process. Um, also on that note, we're also very close to finishing the construction documents, which should be done um, by the end of the summer, or by, I'm hoping by the Transfiguration Feast, uh, we will have good news uh, for that. So things are still in the work, even though we don't see anything outwardly. Um, the Holy Spirit, uh, series that we're doing Saturday nights, it's also available on YouTube anytime, um, is coming to a close. We have maybe just two more uh, talks. God willing, next time we'll talk about the sacramental life and how the Holy Spirit works in that, and finally the spiritual life, um, which is uh, very crucial you know, for, for all of us. Um, <clears throat> and again, we can't have one without the other. So God willing, uh, we'll still have Vespers at 7, followed by um, the, the sermon um, on the Holy Spirit. Um, finally, um, regarding the liturgical services, um, we will still maintain the walk-in on Wednesdays, but unfortunately, just because um, we, we can and continue to pray for those who are sick, and uh, but we want to um, make sure that everyone is, that we also have uh, a more organized way of, of preparing for who is coming. So the walk-ins are, are great for you, but are a little more stressful for, for me because we don't know who's going to come. Maybe everyone decides to come on Friday and not Wednesday. So we thought instead it might be better and more responsible for us to, um, instead of opening it up completely, we say, okay, uh, just register for a liturgy. And even if you already attend liturgy, we'll try to squeeze you in, if possible, a second liturgy, um, just so that um, we're trying to keep everyone as, as safe as possible. Um, and so also, as we have said before, if you can um, kindly, if if you had tested positive, positive um, please let us know, especially if you're going to, if you're scheduled to uh, attend a service, we'll put you in the next available slot after you have tested negative twice. This is the guideline from his eminence. I think it's a very wise thing. And if you have been exposed to someone who tested positive, even though you're not feeling any symptoms, um, uh, try not to come until you've tested positive twice. Um, or if, or just wait two weeks. Um, uh, so, so like we said, there won't be any um, uh, walk-in this liturgy this Friday, right, the 17th. Um, uh, but so, but we will but sign up and and register so that um, we can get you in uh, another time. Did I miss anything? Okay, thank you. Bless. Blessed are they.